Yo, what's good? You're listening to Everyday Superpower, the place where we talk body language, non-verbal communication, and everything in between, all right? We talk a little relationship and game on here too. Don't forget that, people. Don't forget that. But today we're going to talk about... I don't know. Um, We're going to go into the realms of charitable action and selfishness all in one. So I'm going to tell you not to save the drowning man. And what I mean by that is when you go to save the man who is drowning, as a result, you may end up getting pulled beneath the water, okay? Perpetuating your own demise. If we talk vibrations and say something is of low vibration, we can say a person is of low vibration. Maybe their emotional state is of a low vibration. And if we are operating at a higher frequency, meaning we are buoyant, energetic, in tune, prepared, ambitious, on purpose, to be met and to align and to lower ourselves to that lower vibration and frequency is gonna detract from our spirit and whom we are at that particular point in time. Have you ever had a friend who has always been negative? Have you ever tried to defend somebody who couldn't defend themselves and as a result gotten yourself into a problem. We must pick and choose our battles but sometimes you needn't save the drowning man. There's a high suicide rate when it comes to therapists, psychiatrists, those who take the weight of others on a consistent basis upon their all shoulders. You would think it would be a fulfilling job to be a nurse, a doctor, a carer. But as a byproduct of the role and the negativity that is around on a consistent basis, you bring yourself down to that level, miserable, depressed. Now those roles are to be admired. And they are for a specific type of empath, but to be an empath also means to be there, present, submerged within the wave of that as to which you are given by somebody who is in a negative space. When I pass a homeless man in the street and I have nothing to offer, by default the engagement of just saying hello to somebody who is down on their luck and not being able to help brings me down by Default, it detracts from my life experience. And I've been told I don't have a great deal of empathy from time to time, but regardless, the communication of having to turn somebody down just through brief communication without even knowing the individual, the no does not empower me. Yeses bring me up, but noes a firm, bold, and stiff and stern. I didn't save the drowning man, but I still got brought down by the energy of our communication. 
These little bites add up. When the piranha bites you, it might nip. But if you exist within the waters for long enough, you'll die. You'll be eaten alive. Or something like that. You can you can correct me if I'm wrong. You know where I'm coming from. Okay. It's been months. And you have continued helping the same person who just won't change their ways. It's within their character to work within a pattern that is detrimental to themselves. And you think your assistance is going to change that. Well, it's not going to. But you're going home tired. You're going home fed up. You're going home with another individual's problems in your mind. And it does not matter who it is. Whether it be family, friends, acquaintances. You're currently assisting the drowning man who has taken your hand. And is pulling you down in there with them. Now let's say this individual starts to see that you're feeling down but loves for you, care for you, it is a family member and they don't want you to feel this way, yeah? The momentum increases tenfold as they see the effect they are having on you in reflection of who they are and they start to feel worse and in them feeling worse, you continue helping. As a salesperson gets so many yeses that it's hard to say no. So you've been assisting this person 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 months, right? Straight. Wearing you down bit by bit. Being stabbed with a spoon over and over and over until it starts to cut. Now what happens when you say no? It doesn't all go away. You have to swim to shore now and you're drowning. That weight is still on your shoulders. You've said no. And now you've helped this individual for so long and now you've detracted that from them. Not only are you a bad person. But they'll look at you and in the back of their minds think... You could have just held on a little longer. We know things won't change. I'm sure unconsciously they think, they know they're aware of who they are. They know things won't change. They've lived their life. But we're still going to play the blame game, right? If we're in the workplace and your colleague is about to get fired, has been doing all the wrong things. Do you want to be guilty by association? Are you gonna try your best to help and assist and aid? No, don't get me wrong. In my personal experience, these are the best sort of people. These are the fun, energetic people who are great to actually work around, but it's not what a boss wants. So when they see you both partnered up, as the cliche goes, you are the collective of the five people you associate with the most. Are you going to choose that person to associate with in the eyes of your boss who has put his head on the chopping block? Are you going to feel good and fulfilled? Are you going to be a saviour? Because a lot of people do this for their ego's sake. Not through actually wanting to see the person strive. But through their own ego and feeling good for themselves. And patting themselves on the back. And letting the whole world know how good they are. Virtue signalling. I've seen depression. Depression strikes people and you see the effect it has around those who care for them. Nobody wants to see those they love depressed and down in the dumps. It brings those around them down, you see. The man's drowning. 
It's a powerful force. A little bit of food for thought. I'm going to sign out. Peace.